My mic is muted. Welcome. <laughs> it's okay. The music is nice, I think. Um, but welcome, everybody. You know it wouldn't be a live show if I didn't start out muted. Uh, but we will be talking to Dockside Media in an hour to discuss their documentary in plain sight, the intelligence community in UFOs. So that'll be exciting. We've got Ray, Amy, we got, we could put their names together. <laughs> we got Amy and Rather backstage. So they will be joining shortly. Hello, everybody. Hello, Andrew. Hey, Lord Ludacris. I know, Justin, I, but I was trying not to have the foggy camera effect as last time, so at least I have an excuse. Uh, but anyways, we've got so much to discuss, so I don't want to take up too much time uh, with a, a huge show and tell segment, but I do want to take the opportunity to let people know that uh, November 13th, in Jefferson, Texas. I will be at Texas UFO Con. You can buy tickets on Eventbrite. I think it's like $22. So if you're in Texas or you're just looking for a road trip idea and you want to meet me and some other people, I will be speaking there. There will also be some other awesome people there. Well, actually some, hopefully they're awesome. I actually haven't met them. Full disclosure, some of these folks, but Daniel Allen Jones is a friend. He'll be there. And so it'll, it should be a pretty cool event. So uh, that said, let's switch out the background so we're not looking at our uh, just like bottom halves <laughs> all, all interview long. <laughs> and we will bring on the co-host of the show. If I can find you among all the clips that I have ready to share for everybody, we've got Ailey, hey. Amy. Alien up, girl, one more blood. What's up, Jane? Ra rather be squidding. So, what's hey, up, Jane, Amy? Hey, Amy. Doing, yeah, doing well. How have you guys been? I hope you've had a better week than me. I felt sick for most of it, and then it's a it's a horrible thing to complain about having work done on your house. I am so grateful, but <laughs> I am very. Uh, I guess protective over my quiet hours during the day and I haven't had those consecutive you know day after day and I'm it's such a great problem to have <laughs> so again but I'm just you know I've kind of been in a mood today but how about you have you been hopefully it's been better <laughs> better for you yeah it's, yeah, I mean, I hope you're on the it's been pretty chill lots of that's good Lots of energy, like UFO wise today. Whoa, yeah, well, like so I was real. spinning on a flying talk. saucer. Greer, mm -hmm. yep, and we've got lots of people here to break it all down with us. Hello, Cindy. I don't know if I've seen your name in here before. We've got Kurt M. Yes, definitely appreciate a thumbs up or a like if you like what we're talking about right now, which is liking videos. I mean, you like videos, right? You So like this video. <laughs> uh, or if any any videos that you know, you've seen from my channel here, remember to subscribe. Also the links to Amy. Echo. Also links to Amy and rather in the description as always, you can support Amy, you can buy her UFO and go subscribe to Rather's channel and all that. So please do. And there's always the ability to donate to this channel, to the search for the truth uh, by hitting a super chat. Or if you're watching in the future, YouTube has a thing where you can do a super thanks. So you can help out and it's incredibly appreciated. Uh, there's, you know, time and actual money <laughs> that goes into doing all this. So you guys are kind of the only thing that can make it go. So hello, everybody. I don't know if I said hi to you yet. Mostly space. I know a lot more. Uh, always nice to see hides. Glad you guys are glad to see each other. So, okay. Since I know that we have uh, Chris and Tyler from Dockside Media in the second hour, I have a few clips from the Stephen Greer interview today that we're going to say, but we're going to go. Well, don't worry. We're going to go through some 
shortly here, but then I'm going to save some of the juicier ones for the very end to get their take on it. Cause I think, especially for those, um, I think their perspective will be, it'll be good to get a nice panel panel in on some of that. So we have a lot of topics. So let's see before we get, I mean, I think the Stephen Greer interview, did you guys both get a chance? I did. Okay. Yeah. It was interesting. Yeah, it was. I was on the edge of my seat for sure. I feel like it was entertaining no matter what what your take, right? It was pretty yes. good. And it was built. It started out with like, I don't know, probably hundreds waiting. And then it was like 1,000, 1,700 views. And then it was 2,000, 3,000. And it built like, I think, past 4K views toward the end there. So it just kept climbing. And then I don't know if he's, if Kurt Jamungle from, am I saying his last name right? I'm I'm the I worst. So. I have talked to him uh, through UCR, and I'm a big fan of him. So I mean that with no disrespect. Uh, his channel is great. So, but I think he's posting. He will be posting the interview to his channel. So you guys should go subscribe to his channel. You should absolutely watch it all if you are interested in this. <laughs> Yes, we will talk about this. <laughs> Justice Fever. I can't wait. We will start out. We will start out with that. Uh, um, yeah. So if you if you got to see it, very cool. Uh, and then I would, but he's going to be reposting it with like the audio and good condition and any potential edits. Who knows? So go check that out for sure. We're not going to be able to unpack all of it today by any means but i do have some clips in fact let's just um i have some other stories too so maybe we'll just we'll start out with some stephen greer and then we'll we'll pause and we'll go into some other story we'll just he will <laughs> he'll be our beginning middle and end of this disclosure journey <laughs> good old today. greer sandwich yeah and i don't <laughs> and i don't have the clips like well labeled so you know just bear with me guys i started out on mute you know it's just one one stream at a time. So, um, but I, th I think this is the right clip. Um, I'll know right away. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. So this for me was the highlight. Um, so for any of you who missed it, um, this was, I, this needs no context. Just, this is my favorite part. Hope you guys can hear. It's exactly what we're talking about. You open source it immediately. You then hand off all that information to us and I will get you know, 20 of the top celebrities working on this to, to announce it to all their fans and get all the fan girls and fan boys of people like from Justice Bieber to whoever, you know, God. Oh, wait, did it literally pause? Or, you know, God. Did you guys hear that? It did. It paused right at Justice I have Bieber. The whole, I have the whole clip. Oh, that's so frustrating. Actually, I, I will be able to find the whole clip. Um, I have it. I do have it, guys. Um, because it, it's it's worth it's worth it. <laughs> Justice um, Bieber. Yeah, what happened? What happened to that? Yeah, get, bear with me. Yeah, but anyways, <laughs> Justice Bieber, and then let's see here. Let's see here, Come, guys. I'm telling. Greer you. might know something we don't. He might be uh, be nominated to a to a Supreme uh -huh. Court one day. Oh, that's good. Rather. Well, that's oh so man. Good. You know what? That's okay. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Um, you got to go watch the full clip later. I, I had the full clip. I don't know what happened there, but it's really funny because Kurt laughs um, visibly, like, just like we all, all did justice Bieber. And then he continues. He's like, he goes, justice Bieber. And <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Green, was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> goes, yeah, yeah they're really well. into that. So he doesn't even like, so he, the whole time it's just, just <laughs> Bieber. <laughs> And at that moment, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, am I like a fan of Stephen Greer now? Like, this was the yeah. most endearing moment I think that he's ever had really ever. Right. So I don't think Kurt was yeah, expecting been, that. But He added Godsmack, right? He was like, we're going to get all these celebrities together, like Justin Bieber Godsmack. and Godsmack. <laughs> and then Ariana Grande, Ariana Godsmack. Grande was in there. Yeah. Justice Bieber, so just, God just said. perfect. It was but, so good. So you have to, you'll have to watch. You know, go watch the full interview just for that moment alone. 
I, I think he, he Stephen Greer probably actually does hang out with those celebrities. That was oh. kind of my take, don't, don't you think? Yeah. Yes, okay. I, I, I do believe that. Yes, I believe that he's a, a justice believer. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, I, but that's what makes it endearing because I do think he is truly just like, I am a doctor who's trying it, to connect and you know, to the youth or whatever. <laughs> you know, he probably called <laughs> Justin Bieber Justice Bieber to his face at some point too, oh, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I would love to be there. Oh, I would love to be there. Oh, oh man. So that oh, was that was the fun. highlight, a hundred percent the highlight for me. Um but yeah, go go watch for the full moment. Or I'm sure other people will have that's gotta be that'll be a clip I feel like that has to uh make the round shortly. So you just watch shout Stephen Greer <laughs> PR team because <laughs> They got to get started on some counterintelligence there. <laughs> You're gonna have to start writing some uh, some uh, tweets to, to Justice Bieber, getting ahead of that so that he stays, you know, part of the disclosure cause. <laughs> um, but yeah, so okay, so let's um, okay, so let's pivot. We're gonna pivot, guys. We are gonna totally. We're gonna take a, a second from the roller coaster that was the theories of everything Kurt and Stephen Greer and Dan Zetterstorm from that UFO podcast. Correct. Yeah. He was also part of the interview. So, but there were, there were a lot, there was a lot of news going on. And so I guess I, I'm just going to go kind of in the order what I have here just for technical smoothness, if for nothing else. Um, so this was, and again, uh, a few reminders, actually, before I continue, beyond, beyond subscribing to the channel and checking out the links of Amy and Rather and our guests who will be here shortly. Um, I did forget to tell our guests, but people know by now. Some people are annoyed by it, but it seems like most people like it and it's not going anywhere. Um, or the tinfoil hats. They are there. You know, you could, everybody's welcome to bring them. Um, and the, the purpose a lot of you know by now, is if you do feel compelled to share a really far out theory that you know there's really no evidence or like traditional, I guess, conventional accepted evidence around, but that you just really have a gut feeling about and you want to get it out there, but you don't want to get crap for it. You don't want to be interrupted, judged. You're kind of acknowledging the the goofiness of your idea while sharing it, but, but you mean it <laughs> with your whole heart. I mean, and you may not feel compelled, uh, or multiple streams, or um, I don't know, maybe you just have a, a bazillion ideas, you know, in in one stream. It's meant to be used sincerely. So that is the idea, idea of it. Uh, but it really is a serious, I know that it seems silly, but it really is a serious thing too. I think it kind of provides a safe space. It's like a nice big asterisk and disclaimer over everything that you're saying, especially if you get clipped. So... <laughs> So that that's Genius. the whole idea behind it, right? And there's another podcast I do with my friend Jess Rogie, and I and I hope to have you guys on in future episodes, which is Weird Hollywood, and it's a similar idea. It's a safe space of discussing ideas through the lens of popular television and movies. So that's that's the other thing. But um, yes, Amy has <laughs> yes, seen oh his gosh, thank you, Travis. Amy creates a lot of amazing pretty things you guys should go I don't, are you updating your instagram lately i haven't been checking out anybody's instagram no no, no. Well, the first episode I you did, said you yeah. weren't good at craft i did no i think you she's did. being sarcastic I, obviously I'm a very yeah. sarcastic <laughs> person you, you wouldn't you wouldn't have known rather um, oh yeah you didn't know okay. but, but I also yeah had my just, yeah glue gun when i was putting it together before the show yeah, yeah. no but yeah the crafting thing Thank and you. Thank I don't you know. Do you have an Etsy shop? Um, not anymore. Not anymore. I, did, though, to yeah. again. I just like it's doing it, and posting it and sharing and making things and giving them to friends and stuff. I'm wearing them on shows like this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe maybe the Etsy will, you know, maybe there maybe it'll make sense again. And maybe rather we'll be monetized soon and you know all all of that and we'll have we'll upgrade our tinfoil hats we'll get sponsored <laughs> hats <laughs> um so okay and then the other reminder is if things get off course because i want to remind people the spirit of this channel 
Um, we're really grateful for the legacy of it. We would not be here if it was not for UCR. This literally was that Rather and I just wanted to keep doing a show and we weren't rather ready to stop talking about stuff. We had a free night and Thursday. So it's like, well, let's just maybe keep doing it. And then keep we brought it in. So we're grateful to Luis and UCR <laughs> the legacy, but it's not the same channel either. And you have to be careful because if we get, you know, too off track, you know, I just might throw some <laughs> Linda Moulton how AI cat art or, or, or some other, you know, varying things. I might throw in, you know, some more things into the mix if things get too dramatic, too intense, because it's really not, we don't want, you know, we all want to leave. I want Amy and rather and me and everybody in the live chat to be entertained and have fun and to learn and to think big thoughts and, and, maybe have intense conversations, but I don't want people to leave here feeling stressed out or angry or confused, you know, right? So we try to keep, <laughs> we try to keep things pretty level while still, you know, like pushing the boundaries a little bit. So, and I say, and the reason why I'm bringing that up is because of this next story. Uh, but it's, it's just relevant. I, I think it's, pretty relevant the the tweet the tweet heard around you know the world of ufo twitter even though the hashtag wasn't on there um this was eric weinstein's like very like mystical <laughs> in my opinion tweet here he says this is about him meeting le good old le uh i dec he was being asked to share what he learned from his conversations with lou alzando uh makes sense good good question i think i decline my private conversations are treated by me as private. All this checks out. Makes sense to me. And then <laughs> it gets a little weird. And there are potentially serious security implications. I may be a fierce critic of government malfeasance, corruption, and gaslighting, but I'm also team United States. If that's confusing, I can't help much. I will say that is confusing. <laughs> And um, it's very confusing. Just, yeah, just so, so roundtable reactions. Amy, you go first. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I think it's fascinating that it, I mean, it has to be a private conversation. He's a he's a huge person in the spotlight right now about all sorts of different things. So if you sit down and you have a conversation with Lou Elizondo at the peak that, you know, Weinstein's at. Um, and they meet up and they have like a little meeting of the minds. Don't go brag about it on Twitter, at least. Like, that's kind of, I was hanging out with Lou Elizondo. He told me everything. Like, what? That just don't, why? Why did you do that to us? So now mm -hmm. I'm sitting here thinking like, what were you guys talking about? You know, like there's a couple of things, like all sorts of things come in my mind. Like, who knows what the heck they were talking about at this mm -hmm. point? I don't know. But it'd be cool. Like, why not? Like, there's so much out there. They should just tell us, you know, like, who cares what you talk about, you know, underground bases, you know, in the desert. We've heard of those. Like, just tell, like, we, we kind of know. So they should just, just don't brag about it on Twitter. That would be nice. Or just tell us. Okay. That's, that's what I got from it. <laughs> what about you, rather? I think that's yeah, fair. I think that, yeah. Great, great point. You know, it's kind of like, telling someone, oh, I have a secret, but I'm not going to tell you, right? And it's like, okay, if you have a secret and you don't want to tell us, yeah, just, just be quiet. I totally agree with that. But God, it also kind of, I mean, this this pattern of Lou Elizondo kind of privately telling people and then telling those people, oh, but you can't, can't spread this information. It's kind of Lou Elizondo's MO, right? Like he did that to uh, Jeremy McGowan, you know, at least that for Jeremy McGowan's story. And we've heard other stories about him showing video clips of these secret UFO videos to his, his friends and saying, oh, but you can't share it kind of stuff. And I don't know, to me, that just reeks of manipulation, you know, like really what other reason could you be doing that if not to try to manipulate the narrative? And really, you're going to tell someone like Eric Weinstein something that has serious security implications, someone who's, you know, you know, his, his he's manager of feel capital, like a, you know, he's surely going to tell his boss, feel all these security implications. And it just, you know, so the, the rich billionaires can be let out on the secret, but, but the public can't, it just, I don't know, it kind of aggravates me really. I, I, I'm not, not a fan of, of that. I think those are both very 
fair points, which would get potentially get me in hot water as I learned on Twitter because I usually don't <laughs> go into Twitter anymore. I really don't. I go, I don't go into threads anymore for a reason. And I did. And I was like, Oh, I regret this. And then I ended up blocking somebody. <laughs> so <laughs> so that, that's how it went. And then I was accused of slander, <laughs> which is, <laughs> which is you can't literally can't do on Twitter if you know what slander is. But um, anyways, um, I think those are fair points. I have no idea what was said, I would presume that Ali didn't say anything that was, act, you know, that he wasn't allowed to say or that, like, that was illegal to say or anything like that. But it must have been an intense enough, intense is the key word tonight, intense enough conversation where Eric felt like, wow, I suddenly do know a lot of insider information I didn't know before. I feel like if I was talking, I feel like I feel like that when I'm talking to people behind the scenes, even if they're not necessarily sharing me, sharing with me special leaked information, just the fact that they're maybe nodding their head at something, an idea I just had, right? Feels like, oh, they're, they're saying yes to some conspiracy theory i have and so maybe they have insider knowledge what do you think rather well i mean that's how they manipulate you right yeah. is by you know if, if they you, you kind of know that it's all bs because you i, I i'm with you i don't think lou elizondo is going to spill the beans on any classified information in a private conversation so if he's you know telling you stuff that seems like it has serious security implications it kind of de facto means that it's bs in my opinion well, and it's whoops, guys. I those close up, that close up. Woo, woo, let's go on a roller coaster. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, um, yeah. Well, and I think kind of to Amy's point, though, okay, if he like, why include anything like why include that tease on Twitter at all? Just leave it at it. It's a private conversation if you really do think it could have such a dramatic effect well why even i don't know i feel like i would I feel like i i would just try to be cool though i don't know if it's because i'm actually cool but i think i would just be a little embarrassed to be bragging about <laughs> meeting somebody but I'm yeah curious. i mean i think there's that sense of wanting to well i mean he is an important guy but i think that you know he kind of you know, a little bit likes himself perhaps you know it's a little bit of a narcissistic post but but to be fair to eric too he did post on that thread when uh, some people challenged him on, along these lines saying that yes i like 1000 percent think that i'm being manipulated here and that i don't really know what to believe so you know he there is some sense of reflection on on his end as well you know it's just yeah i i i would be quiet if i was him in, in that position and I guess, I mean, none of us were a fly on the wall. So maybe if we were, a lot more would make sense. And we would be siding maybe with Eric or with Lou or, or or maybe we'd think it was even more ridiculous. I don't know. Because maybe maybe they were just talking about stuff we all know that's like completely public information that that maybe though does, if you think about it though, a lot of that stuff does have security implications. So another angle is by if, you know, Eric Weinstein, he's a thought leader, right? So he, he could perceive that, hey, if I, if I say yay or nay to this person, if I advocate what they're doing or if I'm against it, then I am directly impacting a government right effort and so i just don't want to affect it but i think that tweet set off a much greater storm <laughs> than if he hadn't said anything at all so that's where it kind of falls apart a little bit yeah i mean that, that that's kind of bring up an interesting point you know what if what if it you know that's the psyop narrative is true that you know the lou elizondo and everyone are, are manipulating the public but he kind of comes to you in private and kind of tells you what the goal of the psyop is and it actually is something legitimate for the security of America. You know, it's they're they're lying to us about aliens now because there really is a, a Russian threat or some other some other operation that is really undoubtedly for the benefit of us all. And if you were to spill the beans and, you know, 
make everyone believe it's a th- psyop, you would ruin that operation, right? Like I could see how that would be a, a challenging spot to be in. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's true, but I mean, it's a possibility. Amy met, met Lou. I mean, did you? I did. And you, I mean, you bragged about it, but in like a, uh, not did, in I a, bragged uh, about it. no, I in did. a, in a cool, <laughs> like I would be here, I would be trying to be too cool and I would like understate it. And that's like stupid. Whereas you're just like sincere about it. Like I met. Well, yeah, I got jealous. Yeah. I got jealous. This other girl went and she got a picture with him because there was no one there, guys. It was the where at? thing in Roswell for the 75th anniversary. And I get into this room and like Lou Elizondo's at a table. Travis Walton's at a table. Alejandro Rojas is chilling. Robert Salas is at a different table. UF, I, UFO bros. Emmett is like rolling around. Like a big crew. You know, wow. It was a big crew of people. And then it, I, I took the photo with Lou Elizondo. And um, yeah, I mean, it was just fascinating. I was just like looking around and there were so many different people. Um, and I talked with his wife and him and I had a good connection I think um, I, I'm very honest, direct, and upfront, and I did a really good job kind of easing into it because I wasn't going to be rude or anything like that. Because some people, they're they're just very like insane. Like, why didn't you, you know, ask him? Ask him what, <laughs> you guys? Like, I don't know this guy. Hi, my name's Amy. I rather you probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Tell me the but truth, like, Lou. <laughs> but he, he's also mapped out and checked out everyone who was networked in our little network. So he he gave me the look, and it was like an oh okay, like I I I didn't expect Lou to recognize me, and I knew he did. Yeah, I'm bragging a little bit, but it's it was true. Like Manny five hundred three is a is a friend of mine, a good friend who you know like I, when I'm like hey man, I'm stressed about this. He you know I have a lot of friendships. Um, that are really like, you know, those are really important to me. And, and so I think he knows that, I mean, I've been following Manny's channel since he yeah, started. Yeah, then they got like rather that. right here <laughs> too. Oh, sorry. Right? Okay. Oh. Sorry. Yes. And oh, rather. Yes. So you have like, but it's <laughs> weird. There's such I a, I don't know who's, degrees, the... it's just such a six degree separation of people that have like been caught up in the, I would say the, the whirlwind that, you know, of Lou Elizondo for for better and worse i don't i don't know how you put it right just like it's a i it's there's no other person like voice in this world who i know as many people that have been impacted personally it seems like a little bit but but it was a yes. cool experience like you you didn't get any you didn't get any creepy MIB vibes and no. you didn't feel like he was giving you illegal like information <laughs> Trying to I was manipulate like, I hear you're you. a spy. I said that yeah. to him. Yeah, that's fun. That's hilarious. Yeah, he was like, you get real nervous. Yeah. <laughs> he did a little bit. <laughs> Maybe he was joking, though. I don't that's think so. That's hilarious. <laughs> See, you could have tweeted, I, Lou Elizondo gave me an uh, indication, indication that he was a spy. See, like, it, <laughs> well, he does, you special, I think he does it. special little things with somebody. Because I don't know if somebody was yeah. joking earlier. They were saying that Lou Elizondo whispered something in his ear. I don't know if that's true, but he 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 was very sweet. He kissed my hand when we said yeah. bye. I was like, "Wow, this guy's so it was a successful, freaking great, successful." <laughs> I'm just like, but you know, it's it is what it is. But you know, he's obviously a very controversial figure. But him and I knew that. But you know, and it was funny because it got so many likes, and um, it really kind of felt tongue in cheek. My, I mean, I have a you know. I'm spying on the spy, you know, like whatever. <laughs> I was, I was do, I was getting to it, you know. I went in the inside and found yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you think you know me? You don't know me. Look over here. Take a photo with me. Yeah, That's it was so funny. funny. You're like nice guy, up. you know. Everybody, they were nice people. Nice people, good people. It was, good, it was good energy. There were all those people. Alejandro Rojas was over here. It was surreal. Anyway, That's but yeah, crazy. thanks for asking. And I always love sharing that, especially with you guys and everybody in the chat, because. Who else understands that, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's, no, I haven't got a chance to meet him. It would be weird. I don't think you have. Have you been in the same room with him yet, rather? No, not no. yet. At one event. <laughs> yeah, that would be. I think that would I, be. I mean, uh, he's a else. charismatic guy. You know, I think yeah. that I think that we, any of us would get along with him, right? Even mm-hmm. if we have our disagreements. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. I, I, I imagine I could see. 
me changing my mind, you know, about him. If you know, we went to have coffee or something like that, have right? But that but car that's, car at a fancy yeah, restaurant. <laughs> that's why I kind of try to I try to separate the person from the disclosure effort, the evidence. You know, I I went through this kind of a process with Jeremy Corbell, where you know I got to know him a little bit. Went on to Area Fifty One with him. Um, really had a good experience with him as a person like i think he's a good guy from all you know all the interactions i've had with him but i separate that from his potential motives and purpose and behind the different leaks of evidence he does and i i can even see that i maybe played a part in that and it's a very weird thing to try to understand and not necessarily say it's, I don't necessarily say it's bad or good I kind of have a neutral neutral take because for me I feel like as long as you're always being true to yourself and presenting the evidence as is you know I mean I didn't I didn't I was out of Area 51 did a really long interview with Nick Pope who was just like the loveliest so again manipulated in person by the, uh, you know, the the former military spooks, right? But no, he was so delightful. We talked about country music. Um, and he's, I, I've kept in touch with him since and he's been, uh, you know, recommended me for different interviews and things like that. But just a nice guy. That interview never made it to Ancient Aliens. And it's probably just because I wasn't a good interview. I don't know. But it might have also been because I didn't hype up the drama of it or it I mean I was just talking about how it was a fun time and surprisingly peaceful because that was the story but if you watched (laughs) any of the coverage of that event afterward it was all about you know going up to the gates and and was somebody gonna cross a line and and that's not how it was I think as long as you're true to yourself whoever or whatever is using you uh fine let them let them give you a platform but okay but we're we're digre- speaking of voices okay so we talked about eric weinstein a little bit and uh, le and jeremy but who started it all guys well yeah us. oh yeah. 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 Also, <laughs> i'm a bleak 82 that's what and i, I and meant I'm, I'm being facetious too. It, it's not, oh, I don't okay. really believe that, you know, Tom DeLong started it all, but he was, to be fair, that initial, that initial leaker, right? <laughs> um, sounds like it means something different when you have a Blink-182 up there <laughs> when you say leaker. Uh, <laughs> but um, the big, I guess one of the, I don't know, it started out to be a big story and then it kind of fizzled out was, Blink-182 returning, and does that mean Tom DeLonge is exiting ufology? Does that mean disclosure is slowing down? I mean, I definitely have my own thoughts about it, uh, but as always, quick roundtable. Amy, what do you, what, what's your take on? Do you think I think Tom another Long one bit the leaving? dust. I think he bit the dust. It happens in ufology. We see it left and right. It's a tough field, yeah. but you know he's smart. Maybe he'll come back. You know, I wonder what the tr- turnover are. rate. I wonder what the turnover rate in ufology is. I feel like it's like either, like, for, there's like the. It's like if you make it past a certain amount of years, you'll be in it forever, kind of thing. <laughs> but you have yes. to make it past like I don't know, is it like two years or something? I feel like we yeah. all know. <laughs> two, three years, and yeah, yeah, you have to be tough. Yeah. Yeah, people drop out. So, you know, I don't blame him, you know. I think he's got enough uh I think he's got enough in the game to come back. You know, he did win that ufologist of the year award when mm-hmm. and everyone was like, "What? I didn't even know he was in the ufology. I didn't yeah, know right? that till they made him ufologist of the year." Mm-hmm. And I was I like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I was happy for him, you know. Yeah. What about you rather? What what's your take? Do you think Yeah, I, mean, I, I, yeah, I think I think Tom can uh, chew bubble gum and walk at the same time or uh, research aliens and play in a band at the same time. I don't think he's out. I think that, you know, he was playing music during this all, right? Didn't he have like his own little band, like side band and some other like Angel mm-hmm. of the Airwaves, I think. So, you know, I, I don't think that this necessarily means that he's out of UFOs. I think that he probably just saw a good business opportunity to go on tour with Blink-182 and make make some bank. Hey, I'll, I'll see you if he comes out to Seattle. That'd be a fun show. 
Yeah, I, I'm with you, rather. I think, like, this was something he posted an hour ago. He's responding to uh, the, what kind of what you're saying, Amy, which I also I think is totally fair. And people do bite the dust and we maybe he um, makes light of it now, but for, for very well <laughs> exits. And, you know, because he has been gradually, you know, he just stopped doing interviews altogether so long ago. Right. And then just every once in a while will pop in. He's the he's been the least accessible of all, you know them whether it's you know jeremy or corbell or lure these or even like christopher mellon or heck even bob lazar lately probably have a better chance of getting bob lazar on than tom DeLong. so i get that but yeah i don't i think this was probably being planned for a while the blink 182 reunion so i don't think it's like a sudden decision he's making uh because he can't handle the truth or uh because he's like annoyed with the upload Twitter because I, I don't think he even participates in that. But maybe maybe you're right, Amy. Uh, I don't really know if it mat well, how much it matters, you know, if he I would imagine that in a post disclosure world, shout out UFO Jesus and that ongoing thread that's going or that was going on this week. Uh, who, you know, I would imagine people like Tom DeLong would jump right back in the ring and would be participating again. So maybe it's just, I'll get back in when there's actually something to talk about. Right. Well, and he's, he's still doing like movies and books through TTSA. I'm guessing, right? Like that, that's not so, shut down. I don't, I don't think. Yeah. I'm trying to think, was this posted September 20? No, he made the announcement like after this, but it was like not long after this. Oh wait, what is this? Yeah, this is, Oh, this wasn't an merch thing. But he was basically retweeting TTSA like right up until that, you know, decision or the announcement, right? So I don't know. I would I would keep the faith a little bit that he's gonna stay in there, and maybe they're just not ready to cue. Maybe guys, this could be part of it, right? Like you're gonna go, you're gonna take a break, you're gonna gather up all this credibility or whatever like with the government and then you're going to relaunch blink 182 and then you're going to drop a song about aliens and, yeah you know, <laughs> yeah so I don't that's, know that's what true enough. disclosure we through the new blink 182 album yes yeah. this is um yes this is what's going on they're gonna he's gonna go to the stage and it's finally gonna happen so i think so, I think so. You, you you heard it here first i mean probably not probably other people have said that too but so I have, I, I, we're already like, um, I don't, I'm going to have to keep, if you guys see Tyler or Chris, please let me know because sometimes I can't see everybody. <laughs> I can't see everything. I'll just like leave them out there to dry, which would be horrible. So, um, they'll hopefully be hopping, hopping on in like 15 minutes or so, um, from Chris and Tyler, they're going to be talking about their new uh, documentary, I guess. I didn't get a chance to watch it. This was a, a surprise interview, and I um, we got the link wrong for the video. But anyways, there's excuses, but I did want to watch it. But it's also kind of fun because I can kind of be like a tease for us today, their documentary, and then maybe we can have them back on, you know, after we've all watched it. But Amy watched it, so I know she's got some questions, and it sounds like this is a pretty a uh, riveting documentary and we've got some pretty controversial subjects in there like Rick Doty. So we're going to have them on. And so we'll maybe we'll also continue to talk about the Stephen Greer interview with them as well, because we're only just now getting into it. I know that's what people want to hear about. So if you um, watch the Stephen Greer interview, we're going to relive some highlights. I know we already talked about the Justice Bieber moment. Um Again, go subscribe to Theories of Everything. Go watch his interview, the full interview, whenever it's posted, um, if for just that full moment alone. Because I laughed so hard at that. And it was, again, probably the most endearing Stephen Greer moment of all time. So if you're pro Stephen Greer, you should be pro him calling Justin Bieber Justice Bieber. Um repetitively pretty much so. one thing we can all get behind <laughs> yes exactly um so i've got some clips here the problem is i i'm gonna have to kind of guess a little bit on this so i might have to pause real quick so i want to save a few for tyler and chris i want to save some to get their take on um 
I mean, these are all, there was a lot. So it, we won't just talk about the clips. I mean, I want to talk about all your guys' highlights and any notes you took. Uh, well, let's start out with the clip. So this was, um, let's see if this is one thing. I mean, there were a lot of highlights. So no reason to go in chronological order. We'll just go through them all. One highlight for me was what Stephen Greer had to say about Skinwalker Ranch. And so I think this is pretty going Ooh. on underground there. Well, we were out there about a year, a little over a year ago and observed uh, late night, uh, what very much sounds like under, under the facility, a uh, drilling um, and uh, building of something deep underground. And my understanding is sort of like the, um, uh, the, Brad, uh, the Bradshaw Ranch in Sedona that got taken over by and, and turned into a black site. So I think that the Skinwalker Ranch has all kinds of weird phenomenon that has to do with this kind of experimentation. So I thought that was a pretty big bomb to drop. And he said even a, there was even a bigger bomb about Bob Bigelow that he dropped earlier, kind of, you know, implicating him in all this. So that guys, by the way, guys, these are Stephen Greer's <laughs> words. These are not mine. I'm not wearing like a tinfoil hat and like, you know, mouthing anything Stephen Greer is saying. <laughs> so I, I am sharing because this is a highly viewed stream. It'll be highly talked about and will influence a lot of people. But also it, it's it's quite a roller coaster because I have actually had similar theories about Skinwalker Ranch. And it's it's scary when you're <laughs> you, you know, aligning with people who are so controversial. But let's let's see what um Amy, you first, what's your, what's your take on his Skinwalker Ranch? Hmm. Tape? Right. So, you know, they were talking about being in the Unita Basin. He didn't go directly to Skinwalker, right? But he talked about hanging out in Skinwalker. I wrote it with Bob Bigelow in the 1980s, right? Um, there was also a lot of really weird quotes, right? And then he was talking about the dump, the, the underground bases. He was, and then I actually wrote in my yeah, notes, Dom. I think here, he kept chatting and it kind of like there was a lot of talking there. There's a lot of talking that Greer did. Um, and so I think people kept kind of getting like a little confused sometimes with what he was talking about. But like you were saying, these are Stephen Greer's words. I'm just going to read a couple of the quotes because at first he wouldn't go into physics, right? He was like, I don't think the general public really needs to know about mm -hmm. physics. <laughs> no one here knows. <laughs> physics and Kurt's like actually you know this is kind of a physics <laughs> podcast and there's four thousand people watching i think you'd like to know so that's that was a fun fun quote he said let's talk <laughs> physics i was like you gotta be kidding me oh, um okay. and then we don't know what it is this is a quote too <laughs> that's the reason i wrote down some of these quotes jane we don't know what it is i never said it was alien <laughs> yeah that's a quote from i was just like wait <laughs> What? So I was very confused, but you know, he, uh, there was, but yeah, so, and talking about how a couple people only knew about, and then they went into the, the technology going and taking the big pay cut, right? Cause he makes six. Oh my K, gosh. He went and made 150 K or 90 K talk. I don't know. It was all over the board, but I would just want, I'm going to, sorry, Kurt did a good job. I'm glad they asked about the flares that happened at the CE5 events. And I'm glad they asked about how um, he was getting funded, what he thought about his funding, how he justified making the money through CSETI. Thank you, Brooke. <laughs> and I appreciate it. I agree. Yeah. That's so. why she, one of the many reasons that I asked Amy to come on this YouTube channel. So, Thank you. The very only grateful place to I'm have semi -normal. her. Semi-normal. <laughs> <laughs> so rather, what do you think about the Skinwalker Ranch uh, phenomenon? I mean, what do you think's going on there? Is he is he off base here or what? Yeah. Well, well they, they started that discussion talking about how uh, Greer was claiming that in three laboratories they were able to you know do something with frequency uh -huh. and stuff to open up a portal to another dimension and then entities came out you know he was essentially saying that the uh the film or the series stranger things is actually a documentary right and uh i mean and then you're saying you know uh, kurt asked is the uh, same kind of thing happened at skinwalker and greer's like yeah 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 definitely you know they're they're doing stuff underground too and 
I mean, there's just a lot, a lot of talk from Greer with out a lot of anything that would make anyone who anyone like me have believe it at all, right? Like it just seemed like talk and it just seemed like made up stories to me. And I was, I mean, I, I think I to Kurt and uh, Dan's credit, you know, they did ask him, you know, I love that they did kind of prod him about the physics and stuff, but you know, they, they, they really kind of just let a lot of those claims go without being challenged. Like the whole entities coming out of portals and stuff like that. And I was a little disappointed by that. You know, I, I wish that they would have pushed back on that a little bit and, and like, wait, what? There's creatures coming out of portals. You know, if that's true, there should be evidence for that, right? Or there should be some <laughs> more than just a, a story to that. So, you know, yeah, I, I was yeah, entertained, but no, also kind sorry. of they would have a, a sorry, rather I didn't mean to sort of blurry <laughs> right away. Yeah, um, but this is that they did experimentally. Thing. So for people they would have a, here's a, what rather is talking very about. Very similar to a toroid device. And at a certain frequency and voltage, and there are, you could, you know, there are, the algorithm for this would be millions of them that could be combined. They would have weird stuff like Stranger Things or Montauk, boom, come into the lab. And this, I know three different labs where this has happened. They can also alter space time. There's a guy down in the, near the Redstone Arsenal that had one of these systems and it would actually snap time you know so the environment around where he was working altered uh, off the timeline back and forth i mean come on greer like uh how did they get the montag back in the portal in the other dimension how how did they how do they kill the monsters yeah. i mean i mean I, so love, many questions I, have. I love the see i have like a really different take in that like for some reason it's not unbelievable to me that they've done how does you know who think that I'm at talking to it right now? It's trying to listen to our conversations, guys. Uh, speaking of, um, speaking of experimentation, but I like I can I can buy it. I can I mean with evidence in back right, and I can be open minded about it, right? But it's like there's no there's no bookending of it. It's just it's just thrown in there along with so many other stories and. And and he le leads with he leads with something that sounds like it might be evidence, but then it never quite is, and segues into something else. And there's so much, so much he said that I agree with, and then kind of in line with, like the idea of the Tic Tac being potentially our own tech, but that not meaning that there's not actual alien tech out there, those kinds of concepts. And I have been told by so many people throughout the years, have you looked into Stephen Greer? You talk about a lot of the things he talks about because I'm, I'm really intrigued by ball lightning and uh, earth lights and things like that, which I don't necessarily think are extraterrestrial, but I think there's secrets to that weather phenomenon, space phenomenon that can unlock things like anti-gravity tech, right? So I've been talking about those things for a long time. I've never watched a single Stephen Greer documentary, read a book or anything until UCR. We, we watched that one Stephen Greer documentary. And I wasn't super impressed with it. I think that was more the editing than anything. I think it was, maybe if you were a fan, you were all in. But it wasn't made for people trying to make up their mind, if that makes sense. Whereas I thought today's interview with Kurt was great for somebody actually trying to make up their mind and really get like the full picture of, of him because it was li not a paid fan live event. It was a live event with a totally mixed uh, organic audience and he had to follow up with he had to have follow-up questions you know you had that moment with justice Bieber that would have been edited out of any documentary which i actually thought was a charming moment i didn't think that was made him that i don't think he lost any credit there so i think he had some good moments and some highs in the interview but then there would be um i i want to save some good stuff for um uh Tyler and uh if if they're able to make it in time uh to, I'm sure they will but I want to save some stuff for them but but here's one of those just like it's like okay I get what you're saying and then he says something like this in, the, in May of 1992 30 years ago that the head of army intelligence general uh the Stubblebine uh Bert Albert Stubblebine the third is what he went by 
offered me $2 billion to not talk about this or pursue this. Um, I told him, you know, I'm not for sale. And then he went to my wife. Tried to Weird. Some of these clips are actually cutting off when I didn't have them cut off. So that's okay, though, uh, because you should check out Theories of Everything and his full interview. It's only private now because he's editing it. So he will be posting the whole interview so you can watch it soon. That's at least what he said, unless they have te technical difficulties or, you know other 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 difficulties no um i don't think there's anything um that could get in anyone into trouble uh in the interview at the at the same time as like riveting as it was i don't know that there was necessarily there wasn't necessarily new evidence there we'll talk about some of the evidence but it was a lot of the i think basic story again right would you say that's accurate rather i mean i i think that the basic story as far as from greer's perspective or Stephen right? like Greer's I, story. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely not, takes not, it uh not lou alzando's story yeah. not a, not a, yeah, not, um, yeah no yeah, yeah. it's not not our story, story. <laughs> yes correct yes yeah, no, no big bombshells of new information or new stories, right. at least that I heard. Yeah, I'm ahead of it. kind of the similar things as I uh, <laughs> pop my headphone out. Yeah, similar things he said before, right? So yeah, yeah, um, but that one, <laughs> but that one felt like an Austin Powers moment, but like in reverse, <laughs> where it's like, wait, 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 you got offered two billion dollars in the '90s just to stop talking about this and like that's just so just to just throw that in and to me that feels like um a speed bump in a conversation that maybe otherwise could have been credible or smooth and i don't know why you would say something like that even if it was true in some way like maybe you were offered stock in a company that was gonna be predicted to be valued at $2 billion in so many years. And so we don't want you talking about this thing that's related to this company that has that. That's how I could see that conversation going. We're launching this technology and it's gonna be worth billions of dollars. So if you go blab about it, you're not gonna get money. Instead, you could, we'll give you stock in our company. I could see there could be a more realistic scenario than that but he doesn't say it like that like he goes into all these like he tries to make other things sound credible that are quite extraordinary right but this basic human human to interaction that we all should be able to say, find some relatability in he just like throws it out there and then he talks about being on the kill list and stuff which i do not have that clip and it's those kinds of things it's like even if it was true why would you just say it like that that wouldn't don't you or seem intelligent enough socially aware enough emotionally intelligent enough to know that i'm not going to buy that to know that the audience is going to be like wait what you were offered two billion dollars like two billion dollars and that was another where kurt didn't really i would have been like <laughs> he questioned the justice justice people. <laughs> but not that two wait two billion dollars but there were so many things to be fair to kurt like so i think he did the best he could i think he did great i think there were it would have been a constant um constant interruptions you know i think if he was able to follow up with every single <laughs> point right that he made well yeah, yeah, I guess kind of my one of my overall criticisms for this is, you know, you, if you were just a newcomer to this topic and you watch, and you maybe you're familiar with Kurt's TOE show and you watched this, would you kind of come away with the impression that, you know, Kurt and Dan are kind of, you know, vouching for Stephen Greer? Like it, it, it almost seemed like there was a, you know, by not pushing back, they're kind of like, yeah, yeah, this is all kind of kind of plausible and true. You know, you should you should take this guy seriously, which. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's a hard line to toe, right? Like, I mean, I think on UCR, we kind of, you know, had people like John Ramirez, and I kind of felt similarly to that. Like, you don't want to legitimize people who are saying kind of crazy stuff. But uh, on the other hand, it is it is interesting and it is entertaining. So, you know, I, I, I kind of didn't like that. I thought that it was a little bit uh, giving, giving credibility to people who shouldn't have it. But, yeah, I don't know. 
Well, you know, good old Tony is always <laughs> there to, um, you know, keep keep us in check and, <laughs> and disagree with me and rather. Um, but yeah, Tony, Kurt did push back and Greer gave him crap for it. I will, I do, again, I think that Kurt did the best he could in, in order to have an interview that long, right? And it, I think if he had pushed any more, it, it could have, I don't know, maybe Stephen Greer would have just ended the interview or something like that. So I think it was a sensitive situation. Um, but there, wa- there was, because there, there were times when I think it seemed like Stephen was a little bit annoyed to be like asking for proof or evidence or equations, right? So I think it was, uh, I guess, tricky. It is live, right? Yeah. So <laughs> there's no chance to go back in time edit something i mean he is posting it later but he you know he went live to thousands of people and you know i've got some (laughs) clips so um he went live with this you know didn't didn't put this on patreon or anything like that so i i have a lot of kudos to him but i think your take is fair rather i mean that's why that's why we're we're here to give hopefully we don't agree with about everything all the time that would be Uh, gotta keep it interesting very boring um but we have very exciting we have tyler and chris in the background and we're going to talk about their uh documentary that they uh, are premiering soon which amy has watched which i have not had the pleasure of watching yet but i look forward to so let's just add you in we've got hopefully i'm saying your last name correctly is it tyler transu or trans you got it you yep you hit it right on the head there ufo (laughs) <laughs> i'm a little it's a little bit easier uh and then we've got chris which chris rupert That's so cool. yeah. did i get that, that right too. Yeah. that was perfect yeah Yay. tyler we never coordinate our names the same we we should probably talk about this before we go on things oh I always oh. keep the Tyler Trans with Dockside Media. I do the dash you, throughout this you entire do process. <laughs> I do the dash and then Dockside Media. You do the word. I think the dash looks better, honestly. But we're we're not that people. kind of show. We're not, not that, that kind of show. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I don't see I was... any dashes in their names, bro. Look around. Yep. Rather be <laughs> splitting. UFO, Jane, and, and, and I was uh, I was muted in the beginning, so yeah, there's no. Uh, in fact, I should probably, like, if I was really savvy, I'd do, like, that. So oh, that's pretty follow good. Follow me on Instagram, right? Well, so, my my take is that, uh, Chris, you are Dockside Media, and Tyler, you're just with him. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh. That's, 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 actually, that uh, adds up. That, that doesn't that that's make sense. Now. Come yeah. on now. <laughs> now, uh, UFO Jane, uh, sad to hear you didn't get a chance to see it yet, but rather, we will okay. send you... An advanced uh, screener link as well, like a private Vimeo link, so you can check it out. Uh, the doc yeah, is yeah, in the YouTube trailer, the look, intelligence look, community look UFOs, and it and it drops October eighteenth. So this coming Tuesday on Amazon, Apple TV, iTunes, Google Play, PlayStation, Microsoft. Um, I'm not sure it might be on Vudu as well, but uh, but yeah. Very so cool. go ahead, take it away, UFO Jay. I just want to say, oh, yeah. bummed you didn't no, no, get to no. see it. I'm glad yeah, no, Alan I, did though. Yeah, I just I uh we had a goof with the link situation and then it was like because I only had the little brief window today, but I will I am I will absolutely watch it. Maybe we can have you guys on again afterwards, you know, after I've digested all. But I know Amy's got some questions for you. Um, but if you're cool with it, did you did either of you have a chance to catch the Stephen Greer interview today uh on uh, the theories of everything podcast? I mean it's it's I wouldn't have expected I didn't, it's not like I told, told you to watch it before, but did yeah, you, I didn't know um, we had homework. I, I no, no, did don't, catch, don't. no, I know. I caught, uh, I actually did catch most of it. Oh, you um, did. I was like doing just, I had some just stuff I was doing today, creative stuff. And I had it going in the background. Um, so yeah, I mean, if yeah. you need me to so talk we'll, on that some, but yeah, it, yeah. So I think no, it was interesting. We'll, we'll, we will, uh, we'll revive. I've got a few other clips and I know rather and Amy have some other thoughts on it. So we will, we will come back to that guys. I, I definitely, I'm trying to look at some of these clips I had here. Yeah. I didn't, we haven't gone over the best stuff that was in the interview. <clears throat> so there were cool. some other we're just much bigger bombs dropped than what we've already talked about. And so we can, 
you know, uh, debut them with you. And then, of course, you guys can check out the full interview whenever Kurt posts it. But let's talk about uh, In Plain Sight, which isn't there. Speaking of, is it what is what's the Stephen Greer? Um, who does the other In Plain Sight documentary? That'd be funny. Yeah, I'm glad was. we're getting this out, out of the way right Stephen up Greer. front. So I believe well, Steve Ross so people Coolhart, don't get confused. Oh, yeah, Ross. Yeah, no, Ross Coolhart. Never I believe mind, he has not one Stephen that's Greer. In Plain not Sight. Stephen it's a book. <laughs> No, yeah, no worries. Uh, but it's a book, it's and I not. believe it's like in plain sight, an investigation into UFOs and impossible science. So yeah. ours is in plain sight, the intelligence community and UFOs. Exactly. Just up front, man, we apologize. There was no malintent, forethought. It it was just an honest mistake with the titling. It comes up later. Hey. You guys are still in Ross's. I'm like, oh, dude, if anything, I hope any type of attention that that our documentary gets, I hope it just drives and throws more people to read his book because we are just not the type of people that are out there. I don't know. We're just not trying to harm anybody. We try and be respectful of everyone. And and we just try and have open minds. And what we do through Dockside Media is try and give these people who've had these unique experiences a platform to share their stories and hopefully in doing so we can help destigmatize these topics like uh, UFOs, extraterrestrials, ghosts, Sasquatch. Um, Cause I think just the more it gets destigmatized and the more people are just com comfortable talking about, yo, I had this really weird experience the other day, or I saw this really weird thing. Like just some more of the people talk about it. Uh, I think more data is gathered and it helps us get to the bottom of it. So we're having fun making these, these documentaries. Yeah. And loving it. And we mean no ill will towards yeah, Ross or anybody else. Yeah. So Amy was, I think it was Amy that, I don't know, somebody was kind of teasing some of the subjects that you have, you know, in your documentary, which I know one is very controversial, which is Rick Doty. So, and you know, we're, we've, just got done watching this whole interview with Stephen Greer. So I haven't even seen the documentary. So I don't even know where to start. I don't know, Amy. I mean, do you have, just so the viewers at home kind of know what kind of documentary this is, you clearly go there. <laughs> so um, I don't know, Amy, what do you, what just questions do you have? Do you have Chris and Tyler here? So. Yes. Okay. So I really hands down love this number one like jane you were talking earlier about like another documentary that was kind of a deep dive right there's kind of these deep dive documentaries where like you really need to know some core things to understand whatever they're doing right but that's never what is the case when i watch a dockside media uh documentary and movie because what they do is they take all sorts of different like they take a little bit of the woo they take the nuts and bolt they take it all and they just present it in its way and they bring out like salient things like um like they talk about avi Loeb, right and then you're also getting like john ramirez talking about the hybridization program right and you're also getting um doty right who's talking about um how we recovered an extraterrestrial in 1947 to 19 52 so when we were talking about um questions when you when he was talking about the extraterrestrial that he had had that they had taken from 1947 to 1952 that he said came from the crash what did you guys probe a little bit more on that question about the et that that dody was discussing being in contact with <clears throat> I'd have to go back and watch the interview to say for certain. I don't believe so. It was one of those um, things, you know, it was Chris and Chris is the one. So I do a lot of the filming uh, and interviewing and whatnot. And Chris <clears throat> does the final edit on the documentary. Um, but Chris can attest to, I mean, Richard just kind of goes like he just, goes and goes and goes and if you see like the unedited interview you know it's like there's no real pauses he goes for a long time uh i give him a signal like man my, my cameras are about to overheat we got to take a like a five minute break to let these bad boys cool down and then in the interim then i would be like hey can you expound on 
maybe it was hybrids or, hey, can you expand on this? And then um, can you tell me a little bit about this? And so that's how the interview kind of went about. Um, well, and Richard, Rich- it seems, Chris, what do you want to say? What do you find? Well, fascinating I was going to say Richard, here, Richard. Richard Doty was one of the original or one of the first people we interviewed for that documentary, right? Incorrect. He was the last one. But that's all right. (laughs) (laughs) I was way off then. Okay, no, I was just curious because I know when we do like the first person we interview, we have like a topic in mind for the documentary, but we don't exactly know where everything's going to go. So what that means is like when we get that first interview, we're not exactly sure what we need to ask them to expound upon based on like after we have everybody else's stories. So I thought that might have been the case with Richard Doty. But yeah, as Tyler was saying, like there is a lot on the cutting room floor from his interview um, that touches on subjects that didn't really fit in this documentary. So a lot of that stuff I left out of the film, but yeah, when he goes, he goes and it sounds it, like at times he just keeps going and then he'll stop himself. Cause he'll be like, Oh, actually I forgot. I can't talk about this or we can't go any further about this topic. And then just starts on to something new. So, uh, but I'm with everyone. I'm the skeptical person of Dockside Media and knowing Richard Doty's past job uh, I always feel like he's gaslighting me as he's as he's speaking because you know like he was just spreading disinformation before is he still doing it is he not it's it's so hard to tell with him Um, because he seems genuine but is that just part of his training I I don't know yeah like sitting down with him face to face and just meeting him and he's very disarming I, I don't mm-hmm. know if it's the glasses. He just, just a very non-aggressive demeanor. Just, um, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but it, I guess it probably makes for a good counterintelligence officer to to be able to gain people's trust. But you're just like, oh man, this guy just seems like, just like a normal everyday guy. He's uh, maybe a little nervous for this interview. Not in the sense of like, oh, like, uh, man, like, how am I going to get out or whatever? How do I lie? But just like a person that gets nervous before having a camera switched on. So it was very humanizing. And um, man, just the stuff that he said again, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I guess it's his, his grave to dig, right? Like if he's saying these things and man, I don't want to give away too much. You guys really need to watch the documentary, but yeah, yeah, just definitely the, don't don't spoil your your film. Yeah, but just some <laughs> of the Roswell watch, stuff. It was really yeah. neat, and him just flat out saying, "Hey, as far as I know, this is the data that the United States government has, and this is what they this is what they believe happened at Roswell." So it's like, well, holy cow! That yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty insane. Um, so I don't know. I Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I realize the world's a really big place. And even an outgoing, affable guy like me, 50% of the population just probably will dislike me because that's just, that's oh, just no. the way the world is, you know? So same thing with Richard. I understand he gets a lot of hate. And for some of the things that he've, he's, he's done or admitted to in his past, like I can understand why people would be upset. Is he turning over a new leaf now? I I, uh, I think everybody's yeah entitled to their own opinion and and right and kudos to him I I just like somebody with the backbone like that to take all that hate and just keep going right there is something to that I admire that in somebody because you guys are doing this and I've seen you in the the UFO Twitter sphere enough that man, what, whatever, you're just going to catch some flack, dude. And people are going to say some mean things and some stuff that's not true or just stuff, whatever, to try and get under your skin. <clears throat> and so I admire you guys for consistently digging into this phenomenon, putting out content to help engage others. I almost met Rick Doty because, you know, the Area 51 uh, going out there, that story from earlier, Jeremy Corbell tried to get Rick Doty out to Area 51 to talk to people. And he was, he kept changing his mind, I think, until the last minute. So it never, never came to fruition. I, I mean, I have a pretty um, zero tolerance policy. I mean, on 
really trusting any of these people. And so it's, it's not personal either. It's, I just, I, um, one thing I'll say that I've been thinking about lately is there seems to be this thing, you know, on UFO Twitter where it's like, I've got my UFO guy or girl, right? And if you don't trust them, then you're attacking them. Then you're accusing them of being a bad person. And, and I get it. Trust, it, it is a big deal if you don't trust somebody. But the thing that people should remember is your trust is yours. It's a it's a, something you possess and nobody else possesses. It's a gift that you decide who you want to give it to. So you're not obligated to give it to anybody. I mean, not, I mean, hopefully if you're married, you, you, in your vows, you know, you vow to trust your, your spouse. And honestly, um, I mean, your spouse is not going to be perfect still at the end of the day. Right. So I don't know what this thing is where it's like, you got to trust this person or this person. That's that's really not my approach. And I think especially some, with somebody like Rick Doty, I'm going to be pretty hesitant <laughs> to trust anything they say. It's like, what's that phrase? Like when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Right. But I guess it's still a data point. It, it's still I think I learned things from it. I, You know, we know that he, tr you know, was a disinformation agent, essentially like that alone is, is valuable to know. So um, what, what's your take, Chris, being the more, I mean, I know you said that you're more skeptical about Rick, but did you have hesitation of even featuring him in the documentary for like the backlash you might get for even like giving him a platform, right? No, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, with our documentaries, I don't think we ever approach them with like a specific narrative in mind or an opinion on the, on the stuff we're talking about. We just kind of like to present everybody's individual stories and let the audience kind of pick and choose what is interesting to them. But um, as far as like Rick Doty goes, he seems sincere and authentic when we talk to him. Um, and that's how it's been for just about, I think everybody we've interviewed for all of our documentaries. We never get the sense that the people are lying. If we did, I think that would have to be a hard discussion Tyler and I would have of whether we would include them in the, like in the documentary. Um, because we're not, Again, what we're just trying to do is present genuine people's stories. And if we if we ever felt like these people were just outright lying to us or trying to take advantage of us, um, they probably wouldn't be in our movies. So we get that Richard Doty is controversial. I mean, we had Anjali in Conscious Contact, Full Disclosure. She's a controversial figure as well. But um, either way, I think there is some interesting things he says some compelling things he says and definitely some entertaining things he says and so with the media you know we're presenting here with these documentaries we're not only trying to like present information hopefully new information to people but also provide a level of entertainment as well um because i feel like obviously it's easier to digest when you're actually enjoying something we're not trying to make like textbook you know boring presentation of facts here so yeah, I, that's kind of my take on it. I don't know. What about you, Tyler? Yeah, oh, no, I agree with you. <clears throat> I mean, if we're just trying to craft some, like, really special narrative that we want with made-up stories, well, then, bro, I'm a good enough actor. We'll just we'll just do it ourselves, right? We don't need to go get these other people. Um, and I don't know. If we're doing a doc that, that's called in plain sight the intelligence community and ufos well i mean richard doty's a prominent figure in the intelligence community so you know i think it's uh like we have reached out to like lou elizondo again if we have him everybody has an opinion on him as well so uh we have to get people from the intelligence community as we were in the uh, backstage uh heard rather talking about having uh, John Ramirez on UCR, John retired CIA officer, John Ramirez. He was another uh, one of the people we interviewed for in plain sight, the intelligence community and UFOs. Um, rather, I think it'd be interesting. I'd be interested to hear your feedback then because you did the long interview with him. We, I did a long interview with him. We had, we left a lot on the cutting room floor because again, we're trying to intersect and interweave everybody's stories and make, and just and we try we try our best to paint everybody in the best light. Like we're not trying to 
make fools of anybody or anything like that. So um, I'll be interested to, yeah, just hear what you think of John, John Ramirez's segment in this doc. Um, but we had him. Uh, and again, he seems very genuine and sincere in everything that <clears throat> that he's talking about and that these are experiences he's had. Uh, just even the neat stuff as far as like back during the Cold War and, you know, uh, being like a ballistic uh, uh Ballistic missiles, uh, opera radar tracker, etc., or, or in, in intelligence uh, over Russian airspace, and the interesting things that he saw, and how the, you know, and how the Soviets were responding to it. Just all these neat things. Um, yeah, just help add credibility, dude. These are real human beings that are doing real jobs and given real responsibility, and. I don't know. They're they're being invited to these other meetings to talk about this other stuff, and they're privy to this information. It's just they've they've all led interesting lives. And also, we have um, uh, an interview with Tom Carey in there, uh, who's Roswell expert and author. I think he's written twelve books. Um, he's interviewed over six hundred first and second hand witnesses to Roswell. So to like sit down with somebody like that as well and just hear this guy since the 90s or yeah, I think it was the 90s he started. He's been doing this for decades, but just all the people he's spoken to. It's like, huh, what a um yeah, what an amazing man, dude. And we and the world needs people like that. We need people to like move their feet, right? To get stuff done, like what you guys are doing here with with this show. Um, this is just how momentum is generated. I love it. So go ahead, rather. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I, um, I, you, I, it was interesting what you said about, you know, Dodie and stuff being sincere. You know, John Ramirez, you know, I agree. I think he is totally sincere, right? And he, he seems like he's definitely, you know, a, a true believer and believes what he says. Uh, I might disagree with some of the interpretations that he has of events and stuff, but you know, there's no, no doubt that he, it seems to me that his motivation really is, you know, he just, you know, thinks these ideas are true and wants to kind of share it with the world. Um, I kind of wonder, do you get that kind of same impression from Richard Doty and kind of just the general intelligence involvement of UFOs? Or do you see some potentially more nefarious, murkier relationships in that in that arena? Man, I, I, yeah. again, I did not get the impression like none. Of, I feel like I'm a really good judge of character and I would have kind of just, I don't know not shut it down. I would have gone through with the interview because I flew all the way out there, but I just, it would have been very like lackluster, but the whole time I'm like, man, this, this guy just, he seems like he's just rattling off experiences and knowledge that he has and these things he's seen. And I, I yeah. didn't get any impression that he was just doing it to try and advance some, I don't know, like alternative, uh, yeah, scenarios for Roswell or whatever to try and mix up this whole UFO community. Um, yeah, and like, uh, it's just one of those things. So we might be doing a we might be doing um, an, a documentary on remote remote viewing as well. Fun. And Richard Doty has like some information on on that. Uh, and so it's just been interesting trying to schedule this interview with them. Like, I don't, it seems like a girl playing hard to get, like, he's not like playing hard <laughs> to get, like he responds, but like, I, I don't know. I just can't explain, but I'm just like, I feel compelled. Like, Oh man. Well, I he already really knows when it's going to happen. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So maybe he is just really good, but Man, I just, I have the, like, I, if anything, my gut kind of says, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe he feels bad for some of the stuff he's done and he's just trying to do his best to insert the data and stuff uh, into this, uh, that the, um, hemisphere of like the, the UFO Twitter sphere. So like that he can help advance this now and, and maybe do some good. Uh, did, did, did you get into the, very uh, different though, like if you watch John Ramirez's raw interview from the beginning and Richard Doty's, they're very, very different because John Ramirez constantly gets personal, which a lot of that isn't even in, in the film where he had some experiences when he was a child that deeply affected and shaped who he is today. And so when he starts talking about these things, you can see how much of a personal connection he has to it and how much it means to him. While 
Richard Doty to me comes off as though he's giving me a presentation to like uh, you know like some sort of council or something so it's like very like feels like he's just rattling off these facts as he has them like he wrote this report and he's just telling me about it now so it doesn't feel insincere but it definitely is a different presentation presentation style and maybe that's just because of their history and their careers they led i don't know but there's a difference there and i can't quite place exactly what i'm feeling okay that's interesting maybe yeah, somebody would, with you... an agenda versus somebody not <laughs> go ahead rather but did you get did you um reach the topic of the whole paul benowitz situation with richard doty i know there's kind of um, a popular opinion that you know he kind of maybe pushed him to suicide but then I, you dig deeper into that and it seems like that might not actually be true it sounds like paul benowitz had a lot of mental illness and i think that he maybe went was you know went to a mental hospital and then way later had some complications um, so that that whole story seems very it almost seems like you know, maybe my I have been manipulated in my beliefs here. I'm, I'm wondering if you can shed any light to that or if you if you did bring it up with him. You know what? I did not. I I think and I'm not entirely sure, but I believe Richard Doty was in was it called Mirage Men? Mirage Men yeah, or something yeah. like that, the documentary. And I thought he touched on it in that for some reason. So I was like, I I <clears throat> I, I know that's a big part of his history, but I um I didn't feel it was necessary to to bring it up with the way I could see the fair. documentary headed. But just my own personal opinion from what the research that I had done and and everything was I was kind of in yeah your your latter camp with uh yeah yeah that it appears right that Paul had some mental right. Uh, issues as well and that Richard would I guess even went back to him and said hey look that like we have been feeding you this information right so that you're not looking into our technology and what we're doing over here etc and that you know at, the, at that point whether it was mental illness or but he was just like yeah of course you would say that right I know you would say that wink wink um so I don't know did did Richard try and do the right thing, right? And that and everything just played out the way it had. And this is what I would, I guess, ask. It's like, oh, man, like, what would you do if your job is, you know, a counterintelligence officer? Like, if somehow I'm lucky enough, man, that, like, whatever, I go to college, I get this degree, and somehow I find myself in counter and tell I'm like, dude, this is insane. I'm, I'm living a Jason Bourne movie. And now all of a sudden you're being told, okay, do look, I know this doesn't feel right, but for the betterment of humanity. And so society doesn't crumble. We need you to do this. And it's a hard task, but I think you can do it. Like, I don't know what I would do in that situation. Like I really don't. I would hope that my moral compass would be like, Dude, there's no way this is completely misleading and hurting people. But yeah, I don't know. Depending on the circumstance, you have a family, you have kids, you have all these things. And it's like, dude, I'm just trying to be a good patriot right now. That's all I'm trying to do. So, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's hard. Fair. Hey, Amy, do you have do you have any burning questions? I know that you recently watched the documentary, so... I know there's some nuggets rather and I are missing out on. Well, you know, it's interesting, like what Chris was saying about the personal connection that you get when you listen to John Ramirez. Uh, John, and I don't see too many interviews where he goes in depth. I know there's been a lot of interviews, you know, but I was really pleasantly surprised. He went on one of my friend's shows, Savita the Starseed. She got him to come on. You guys are going on her show soon. And you've been on her show too. Um, so Savita had John Ramirez on and she went, he went in depth about his star family. He went in depth about these sunflowers. He put outside his window to grow, to let the beings know playing with the beings as a child, being guided, feeling like he always wow. had this connection to the stars. It was like a two hour long interview where he went in depth. Um, so that shakes me. That's where I'm like, whoa, I want to know more. Um, mm -hmm. so my question, I guess, you know, I just, I really just want to say thank you for the work that you guys are doing. 
so much because, you know, we always can watch these little YouTube channels and an interview here and an interview there. But what's cool is you guys get on the planes, you go be there in person, you set up your awesome camera equipment and you sit there and you talk with them and you have this real human experience. And then like what Chris was saying, you divert kind of what's going on based on who you're talking to. And so you guys have just had these really transformative journeys that I've kind of, I've lived through <laughs> 100%. I feel them and I see all these people that you talk to and you guys are onto something. You guys are onto something, you know, <clears throat> especially you had the, so I just want to say thanks so much for everything that you guys are doing and you're putting out there. Cause I think everybody who goes out there and does this, we were all joking that there's a two hour or a two year turnaround in ufology, like, like a turnover rate, like here's a job, like people drop out all the time. <laughs> and it's like the people who stick with it the most, then they've got passion. Like you don't deny it. You're like, yep, yep, yep. Um, so no, I just really loved the documentary. I thought it was so amazing. I thought you guys had some really, really great people. I was so happy to see Jesse Peak in the film. I love Jesse. He has such amazing stuff to say. I, and just just to kind of take in the whole experience, we all know that we're swimming in disinformation. We all know that something might be fake here or there. But that's what it's about. It's about looking and seeing and making your own judgment. And you guys aren't even making a judgment. You're just saying, here, this is what I see. You know, I went on this little journey. Let me share it with you. Uh, you know, and so much of the time it's interesting because, because people get caught up on like, who's a fake and who's a fraud. But like, when you really think about it, like, that's what it is. If you're really into it and you're looking for that one UFO case, all you're doing is looking at fake stuff over and over and over. And then you're like, okay, this might be real. And then it's not, you know? Um, anyway, I just want to say thanks so much for all the work that you guys do. I know your documentaries are, are changing people's perspectives and bringing this out to light. Um, because today I had a moment where somebody in my life, they came up and they said, hey, can I ask you a question? And I was like, yeah, what is it? And they said, do you like UFOs? And I was like, did you find something interesting on the internet? And they're like, yeah, I found your TikTok, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm an enthusiast. You know, I've got some friends, make some documentaries, some ufology <clears throat> research friends. Yeah. <laughs> but it became a conversation and it was, it was, it was like a, are you into UFOs? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, and then just kind of like this calm thing. Like it's not not i don't know i'm not like going rep reptilian praising and things like that and so i think we all know how hard it is and the more and you guys just really put in the passion and it comes out in your work 100 so thank you for everything you do guys it was an amazing no, documentary you're... i love it everybody go get it it's gonna be on amazon it's gonna be it's gonna be on apple tv it's gonna be on everything sort of but i don't know all the platforms but we have them listed in the description and i'll also be tweeting them after the show yeah absolutely and hopefully I linked, I, I gotta, I'm, I, I think I linked to your shape, like your channels and, but I can add more links to the description, you know, afterward and, and all that. So people can find it. Yeah, right. absolutely. Dockside media is the name. Paranormal documentaries is the game, baby. And we're just cranking yeah. them out as fast as we can interview people. This is our fourth one since we started, um, in August, uh, August 17th, 2021. Uh, we got the first one picked up wow. in January of 2022. So we got four picked up um, in the past year. Uh, this Saturday, we're filming Ghosts in the Graveyard, Pure Ooh. Pandemonium, because we live in Pennsylvania. There happens to be an abandoned ghost town called Pandemonium, which, in case you didn't know, is Latin for abode of demons, which is how dope is that? And so Careful. there's this little tiny haunted cemetery out in the middle of nowhere where uh yeah this town vanished 120 years ago um and yeah we just we inter I already interviewed like the author uh and historian on the area and me chris and i think another six to ten people are going to go camp out there uh with some paranormal equipment and see what we can find hopefully we get some ufo Valid. sightings while we're there that's that's the uh that's the idea that sounds awesome Super. Absolutely. And Super we appreciate, yeah, just what you guys are doing. Just like, man, like I said, it takes a lot of energy and passion. And so like when, when Amy gives us these compliments of just being able to like sit and see it, like our passion in our work 
and all the other advanced screeners, knock on wood so far, have all really thoroughly enjoyed the doc, which is high praise from all these UFO and uh, alien podcasts because like, yeah, you guys are watching and consuming a ton of this, this content. So if, if you guys can find it engaging and interesting and have new information, then that it just it, it gives us a lot of hope that cool man, we're doing the right thing. Um, let's keep going. We're only going to continue to get better. And hopefully through doing this, yeah, help shed some more light on these topics. Well, I'm super glad that Amy introduced me to you guys and um inviting you on the show. I'm so glad you're here and you were so gracious to come on last minute and uh and, and just just be impromptu with us today. Um, uh, we've got like it's just crazy how always how fast these streams fly, but we've got like a little over 20 minutes left. So I want to give Amy a chance. I mean, it's okay if you don't have any more questions, but if Amy or rather, if you, do you have any more questions about documentary or any of the things we talked about related to the documentary? And then we'll, we'll close out with some, we'll react to a few things <laughs> together. <laughs> some news. Yeah, well, I'm just kind of curious um, what what your uh, general position is. Have, are you, uh, you have you had any experiences yourself in the paranormal, or are you um, you still trying to figure out whether it's uh, true or not, or you you lean one way or the other after uh, you've uh, done all your investigations? Man, I I feel like I'm I've just always been an open minded and curious individual, and just thinking, man, the universe is like a really, really, really big place, and if an intelligent life form happened to evolve a hundred to a thousand years before us and it followed the same technological uh, evolutionary trajectory. It's like, well, bro, rather you've gone from Pong to PS5 virtual reality already in the last 30 years. So like, where are we in 300 years? Well, guess what? We're probably, yeah, instead of just getting little samples uh, with a rover on Mars, we're probably doing some really, really far out stuff using some advanced physics that at this point in time, like we couldn't even think of because somebody talking about, you know, having like access to all the information in the world at the palm of your, uh, uh, at your fingertips a hundred years ago would have been thrown in an insane asylum. There's like, there's no way you guys can get random five people from different States and have a, high resolution conversation with great audio. It'll never happen live with people commenting. You can never do that. You need hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And we've, you guys have been able to do this just in the past 15 years, 20 years, right. And these small advancements. So I think there's definitely uh, a good chance that there's probably extraterrestrial life out there. And if so, they're probably doing the same thing we're doing is like studying and whatnot. Um, and yeah, it's like some odd different sightings or experiences after interviewing different people that were somewhat paranormal and could be kind of attributed to like the hitchhiker effect. Uh, if you guys are familiar with that, oh, yeah. um, I can go into more detail with that, but I don't want to take up the rest of your show just sharing that stuff. You guys have these like hot takes to get to uh, from the Greer interview. Well, hey, it might relate. I mean, I think there the we go. <laughs> well, then let's run the clips and, and yeah, let the chips them. fall where they may. Well, what? It, <laughs> uh, real quick first, though. Well, no, it doesn't have to be quick. Chris, what's your take? I mean, you said you were the more skeptical of of the two. Do you, did you feel differently before than after making the documentaries about any of this? Yes and no. I mean, I'm still extremely skeptical about everything that we cover, but. Um, I like started doing therapy like a year and a half ago and I've told this story before, but, um, at one point my therapist said, let's try hypnosis. And when she said that to me, I was like, I conjured up the idea of what they do in movies. And I'm like, all right, this is ridiculous. She's like, let's just try it. So we did it. And it, it was something, it wasn't what I was expecting, but it did something. And since then it kind of like reframed my mind to like try and get outside my bubble try and get outside my preconceived notions of things because I only have my experiences in my life. I lived somebody else's life and had their experiences. We all have, you know, these preconceived ideas and you can see it now broadly with politics. Everyone lives in their bubbles. They're all, you know what I mean? It's just, we have a hard time overcoming that. And so that's what I strive to do with Dockside Media is just try and get people to open their minds a little bit. And the same for me, because Again, I'm super skeptical, but 
going out on a haunted graveyard. Haunted is what they say. And camping out. Sounds like fun either way. And if I see something that changes my mind, uh, maybe that's all for the better. So I'm just kind of uh, exploring this whole world, if that makes sense. Uh, trying to keep an open mind to everything. I love that. I think that's the best. I think that's the best approach. Um, just keeping an open mind. I think we all yeah. should do that. Like I know I was talking about the I want to believe hashtag and how I've always used it and I've always meant it, but it really it's I just want to believe that that something will make sense eventually. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know what that is. And that that's a big risk to take. Um, cause we don't know. <laughs> um, thank you event tied for the $5 super chat. That's awesome. Um, and then also I noticed earlier, um, I don't know, I know you guys didn't get much into this in the documentary, but is anybody, thank you for the super chat, mostly space. Thank you so much. Um, hearing about going back to the Rick Doty, uh, conversation. Has anybody heard of him rearranging furniture in Paul's house? Um, to try to drive him crazy. I mean, that would, oh man, that would be pretty, uh, that would be wild if that, if you're getting paid by the government to do something like that. Unless it was just a completely awesome redesign, right? <laughs> the, the, True. The feng shui off the, off the charts. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I mean, and nothing came up in the interview. I, I had stumbled upon that. Yeah. Just like through my reading and, and stuff and research. Um, uh, yeah. And I remember That'd we tried some... to do that to a friend in college when he passed out like drunk in the uh in like the, the the lounge like the lobby or whatever um yeah he didn't believe us we had it all flipped around dude when he woke up when he came to but he was like what you guys are assholes i'm like ah oh, man i thought it, we had him it wouldn't work on me i wouldn't even notice <laughs> <laughs> but yeah if that was taking place seriously i don't want to downplay that doing that to mess with somebody is a serious offense man yeah, um, yeah. so yeah i yeah but I nobody's heard it i guess it sounds like nobody even amy when no none of us mostly space have heard of that so we can uh neither confirm nor deny i'm so glad that i truly don't know the answers to these questions i don't <laughs> want to work for counterintelligence if there was ever i would but you know it's scary it's like what if you get asked to work for these governments or not governments these secret organizations right or these clandestine organizations you're like wait can i say no to this like i am officially this this person that said no to working for this like am i going to be deemed like not patriotic am i going to be watched is it better just to say go ahead and say so it's just a i'll think again i can't really speak to Rick Doty specifically, I haven't done an interview with him yet, but we know that many people were had to sign things for many years and probably still do, and they can't be transparent and they are obligated to lie or you know encouraged to lie for the sake of the country. So it's it's very yeah it's it's a uh, um. But so let's let's lighten things up a little bit. I've got a few, we've got like 15 minutes left. So I've got actually a few UFO sightings I thought that might be kind of interesting to react to. And then some we can finish up with some of the some other some of the better high my favorite highlights and then some more from the Stephen Greer interview today. But um if we want to go back in time, do you guys remember? And this is from the website infinityexplorers.com. Do you guys, so I can't vouch for the, the facts here, but do you guys remember the Lady of Fatima sightings? So do you, <clears throat> I feel like, I feel like you're like nodding your head, Amy. Do you remember like the, I mean, there was, I you go for it. I'm going to like, I'm going to mess Yeah. Up. I mean, I remember the photos, right? Like there were the photos of all the people in that one country. Maybe it's this country. I can't remember specifically. What what was the what what was it flashed up? That's I can't what remember. It, yeah, I mean, I was hoping you had it because Portuguese. I don't know if it was Portuguese. Yeah. I think the one I'm thinking of is Spain, but there's photos Spain, of an entity America. coming, and then they're like there, and the lights all over them, and it's black and white photos. Um, yeah. So there's that know. spiritual experience that was documented by a photo that I've always found mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, I couldn't find the photos. I was trying to look up, uh, but yeah, essentially it was a sighting that people gathered to see that was predicted and i think it was documented enough to where there's even some skeptical 
takes on you know what was happening there rather i don't know if you're are you familiar with it at all i don't know if we left yeah i I actually uh, learned about this in catholic elementary school when i was there they they they, (laughs) they, you know talked about it as a real you know religious miracle back then wow okay so there you go i mean it definitely i mean i don't know if it definitely happened i wasn't there but it doesn't i don't think it was a misidentification or hallucination there are the photos and all the witness testimonies of what it was we don't know but something got uploaded to MUFON. I, I cannot vouch for this, but sometimes I share MUFON reports and the witnesses actually get in touch with me. This happened recently. Sometimes they're mad. They're like, I want my name on this. I'm like, you don't understand. Like, I don't know your name. Like, I can't. I'm just seeing the report from MUFON. It's a public database. I would love to know your name. But um, that happened recently. So let's see if I, I think this is the right one. This video got uploaded to MUFON recently, but just some context if I'm showing the right that's a different one <laughs> and it's not Scottsdale Arizona <laughs> <It's> Scottsdale, <laughs> Arizona. Uh, this is Nigeria so if people want to go do some digging you know maybe we can find out some more I tried to look through the archives this was a 2015 case in Nigeria um, an identified object appeared in the town and several people observed it as it was hovering and glowing and people were gathering, shouting hallelujah and were praying. They mistook the object for the Virgin Mother uh, Mary of Christ. Um, anyways, so there's some speculation here, but I just want to show you the video. Again, I cannot verify this, but I, I'd like to learn more. And sometimes by getting things out there, that's how you learn. <laughs> Wait for it. (laughs) Might speed it up for you guys. So loud. There you go. You can see it a little more. Trust the the crowd still making uh, is very loud. So there you have it. Some it's a little hard because you have the glow of the sun behind it. So I I don't know what it would look like without that. I don't know if the glow is also part of the object or if it is. I'm just making up that that's the sun, but kind of weird. Um, again, like I don't I cannot. I can't vouch for that one. Any just kind of gut reactions, instant reactions to that one? And not anonymous by, MUFON report. By by the end, it looked like the clouds again. But it, it, I was I was wondering if like the object would appear and it looked like, like it was added into the video. But it obviously is like mixed in with the comp- the low compression quality and low quality mm-hmm. of the video. It's like, not very good. It's not a good quality. Yeah. No, so you're, but you're yeah. The the vote the, yeah, the, the reaction say? of the crowd, of course. I mean, this is pretty fresh. This is fresh out of the MUFON database. It was recently reported <laughs> I think, within the, like the last day, so I, I like to to catch those and you know see if I can dig in more and and confirm or deny. You know, uh, because there are a lot of people who saw this. So yeah. again, this was uh, oh shoot, I'm forgetting Nigeria though. So that it's it's really tricky when you have sightings outside of um us nevertheless outside of the north american continent <laughs> it gets it gets really hard to verify those but you can look through foreign media and things um for example another um international ufo sighting this is just a tiktok screenshot if you guys recall we talked about this last stream amy and rather the light pillars in russia there were um I don't know the name of the city bald one of the it, it was a city like that um but it wasn't just one pillar of light it was like several pillar of lights just like towering you know into the sky you know and it was quite quite a striking scene um uh, but there has been uh russian media that did um, FA weather is another thing that I featured. That's not what this is. This is a r- Russian media site, and that reported on it being uh, possible weapons testing. And then you had U.S. media echoing that, but then suggesting it was probably really just weather phenomenon because there are, you know, light pillars that happen. Um, 
I guess, and it's probably not um, super hot in Russia right now. I'm guess you know ice crystals, things like that can happen, right? Weird weird weather stuff. Um, but I did want to follow up from our conversation on it last week. So it's, it seems people were you know how, still trying to figure out um, what happened in Russia with with the war That's going cool. on. You know, I don't know. I, I I would prefer it to be weird weather phenomenon if I was living there, but I, I would be scary to see that if you were in Russia or Ukraine or in any war, you know, um, centric area right now, that would be a scary, a scary sight. Uh, let's see. I have, let's see, let's just, we just got to get into, cause we only have like <laughs> several minutes left. So I have a few clips here. Um, for you guys who didn't, Chris, if you didn't catch it at all, the interview today. So no worries. No homework is required. I was telling that to Rather and Amy earlier for the weird recap. Same for you guys in the live chat. Um, but yeah, there were definitely some major interesting uh, things that were brought up in the interview. And there was one that's kind of close to my heart. And this is where it's like, come on. Stephen Greer, because you're saying things that make a lot of sense to me. And then you go and you say that you were given two billion, you were offered two billion dollars in the early 90s, not to talk about your post. So I'm like, oh my gosh, you're losing me. Um, so I just kind of kept going back and forth. But let's see if this is and people will know why this is close sounds to like this extremely dangerous. Nope, nope. Not that one, not that one, not that one. That's a good one too. You guys can have to bear with me. Over here and say, hey. Nope, nope, that's a good one too. <laughs> burn victims in yes. the Cash Landrum case, which was our covert Air Force operations out of Nellis flying an extraterrestrial vehicle we had captured, and they put a nuclear a, a, a reactor on it because they couldn't quite figure out the, the energy generating part of it, and it was being flown, and it malfunctioned, and radioactive junk was filling on, on Betty Cash and Landrum, and they were hospitalized, and that whole yeah, the ends of the clips are cutting off, but he basically says the whole road had to be dug up because the radioactive uh, hmm. fallout from that. And I have always called it the cash landrum conundrum. And he, it poses a big, that's a big problem for disclosure. I don't expect necessarily L.E. or Jeremy Corbell to be talking a lot about, about incidents like that. And I think that should be a big clue to us in these coming years, because to me, so cash landrum had was a pretty well documented case of a you know a triangular like craft with like the top cut off that was hovering over a a woman and her or, uh, two women and one of the women's grandsons that were driving in the car. They get out, burns, uh, looked to be radiation, you know, symptoms, and they actually sued the government, but they lost the lawsuit, and that's where it becomes a big problem because if this was known foreign or U.S. craft, you know, in our space here and civilians were harmed and had to pay their own medical bills. Well, that's a problem. And if this was an alien craft back in, if it wasn't, okay, if it's not the government's fault, right, their hands are clean. Well, their hands are still not clean because this would have been what a foreign craft or ET craft that they didn't know about. Um, in the 80s and so how suddenly in 2022 then this that means the ufo phenomenon would not be new right and the history would be very important right cases like cash landrum and um we might look at it's interesting in the same conversation where stephen greer is encouraging ce5 he's well aware of or he's talking about kind of these dangerous ufo events so that one um I have tended to lean toward that incident not being alien. I don't, or Tyler or Chris, are you guys familiar with that case at all? Or anybody have any thoughts around um, <clears throat> anybody? You yeah, know? sorry, I'm not super familiar with that. I need to research more. I don't want to just give some uninformed opinion. But anybody, basically, at any point, anybody wants to chime in with any thoughts? Just go for it. I have a question. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so they sued the government and lost. Yes, um, the government there... claimed they didn't yeah. have knowledge of these objects that they were not theirs. They were not the government's responsibility, right? So they were either government craft or foreign craft or exotic potential, right? Unknowns. 
Yeah, that's interesting. I would like to read more about that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, there's a lot on it. There, you can see yeah. pictures of the burns. Um, Colby Landrum has the the little boy at the time has done a pretty extensive interview in uh, more recent years. He actually counted the number. There were helicopters that swarmed the object. That was one of their clues that you know to that this being a government craft or the government knew about it and. Um, Colby actually counted the helicopters when he was. And this in the, was a child the at the time, like there was yeah. a child and that got there burned. Was two women and a. He stayed in the car, fortunately, so I don't think that the effects on him. But I do believe he was still in the hospital, and I'm not. I'm not. Sh or monitored afterward. I don't know the extent of his, the effect on him. But the women who got out of the car, especially it was, the especially the, and she, touched the car and the car was hot and burned her hand as well so again a very pretty well documented case um mm. that I, I think almost certainly happened the question is you know what was it who's to blame and and all that and um and definitely i had there have always been stories about that row this is in texas here um not too far from me and there have always been stories you know about that road uh either that they um were the military was in the area you know right after that and they fighting. had radi radiation burns for sure uh, they had well they had what could be interpreted as radiation sickness it wasn't just burns so it was nausea hair falling out so mm. classic radiation symptoms. yeah hmm. that's not the only case of UFO no. encounter and, and radiation burns. And I do tend to put those in the category of potential human tech. And so here we have Stephen Greer, uh, who is such a, um, uh, just a polarizing, dividing figure, saying some kind of reasonable, but also hard, hard, hard potential truth. So it's, it's, it's frustrating for me. I don't like how the ideas mix. It feel, you know, it's like this info is stronger if there's a little hint of truth into it, right? Yeah, it's like you have a a great cheeseburger with just cheese and ketchup and pickles and onion, and then you put lettuce in there, and it's like I can't taste the meat anymore. What is the point, <laughs> guys? Don't actually like burgers, okay? <laughs> you but like salads. <laughs> I still think there's like uh, it's at least hearing anyone out on this kind of stuff because. What we do with our documentaries is exactly that, where I look for the patterns amongst people's stories and talking points. So I know what is actually like, what makes sense and what, what can go along with each other. So with this kind of stuff, I would love to hear you hear his explanation. I would love to talk to them. I would love to f hear a whole bunch of other people's yeah. opinions on this story and then see where the points line up. Because it's always patterns is what you need to look for in this stuff. Because it's hard to get everyone to tell the same story but if they hit the same at one point you know story beats you know there's probably something t to that story mm -hmm. yeah no we're i can tell that we we think similarly i'm i'm, I'm a patterns person all the way patterns person you know what? um so here i've got a few other um clips from let's see i'm you know i'm gonna have to play like russian roulette here i think with this uh, and i'm you know I'm no, no, no not that one there's we oh, have to get so here. how is it that you protected here, here we go here we go well, it sounds like this is extremely dangerous and and i'm not so how is it that you protected yourself other than making yourself known to many people mm -hmm. and is that the same strategy bob lazar tried so he's he, there was a lot of conversation a lot of the theme was how are you basically still here and so a lot of the interview was Stephen Greer talking about detargeting himself, getting himself out in the public eye, recommending other people do that with their evidence, which I really have no problem with that. It makes sense. It's actually why I went public in 2016, right before the New York Times story, uh, because I didn't feel I was anonymous, you know, up until then. And I was like, well, I feel like I don't know. I feel like it's better just to be out there with everybody. Um, so it makes sense, but that's what this is about. But it sounds like this is extremely dangerous and and I'm not. So how is it that you protected yourself other than making yourself known to many people? Mm -hmm. And is that the same strategy Bob Lazar tried to use? Well, yes, but remember he was a young man who was only there a few weeks and saw very little um, uh, information about this. I have over 1,100 
the well over a thousand people like him, but who. Again, it cuts off who have just a little bit of the information. So that's his, again, a pretty reason. I know a lot of people do not like Bob Lazar. They almost hate him as much as Rick Doty. And just like I was saying earlier, not obligated to trust or like anybody. Uh, but I feel like that's kind of a reasonable take on Bob Lazar. What do you guys think? <laughs> I actually was so funny. I think I had a little precognition before you played that clip. Because oh. he goes and he says to Stephen Greer, hey, man, like, what are your thoughts about Bob Lazar? He says that. And Stephen Greer throws his little his little line there. Small people talk about small minds talk about people. Mediocre minds talk about events and big minds talk about ideas. And then he said Bob Lazar was too young to know what was going on. They wouldn't have handed it to him. But there was something about. <laughs> like we're talking about correlations and stuff so now we have Stephen Greer saying nope I don't think Bob Lazar was there either but he tried to not throw Bob Lazar under the bus which I appreciate we have enough of like name calling and stuff and he knew that that would just turn into this like we hate Bob Lazar that's not what's going on but it, big minds talk about ideas so there's something in line with this Bob Lazar Greer thinks he was, you know, wasn't there, but the ideas being big and we shouldn't be talking about tiny little people like Bob Lazar. We should be talking about the big ideas. So what are we looking over to look at the big ideas? That's, that's the question mm. I start to come to. What are we overlooking, you know, to see the big ideas? Because it doesn't matter, you know, if Bob Lazar went to a college or not. Who cares? Let's just talk about the ideas. Nah, that all, the, all the other stuff, the details, nah. Yeah, let's not let's talk get about the, people. Let's get the equations. You did a nice rundown, Amy, where you're talking about how Kurt was like, well, but I do understand physics. And I, I do, like, can you explain to me the physics? And like, he even asked for an equation at one point. And to me, that's going to be disclosure because the equations exist. If they've been doing all of the, these, if Lockheed Martin and Skunk Works are making these craft, they have literal equations on paper that you could just show, you just flash. So there's no reason that Stephen Greer doesn't have, even if he doesn't understand them, a doctor's not the same thing as a physicist. That should not be expected that we're all physicists, quantum physicists, nevertheless, because that, you know, that's where it's going to go. Um, you probably got to bring in quantum physics, whatever. Yeah, where, where's the equation? So I love that Kurt asked for it and he didn't, he didn't end up getting the equation. It was just kind of more, well, when you uh, tune into certain frequencies and, and I, basically he was describing there being electricity and energy in the air that's untapped. You just got to key into it probably somewhere in the atmosphere or any kind of organic object things like that it's like basically the the tesla free energy but but we know that now we it's time like for the equations but um enough for me rather has to hop and we probably all have to hop here in a minute but rather i know you need to go so what what's your take on the any aspects uh from the interview or anything we talked about today I, I mean, it was a great, great conversation. I really, really enjoyed uh, meeting you, uh, Chris and Tyler. I really like your perspective. I think you guys uh, got the right, got your right head on your shoulders and are doing uh, some cool stuff. Uh, really eager to check out that documentary. Um, as regard to Stephen Greer, man, I wish he would have given us the uh, the frequencies and the powers to open up right. those dimensions to other worlds. But uh, I could see if he told us that, we'd be overrun with demigorgons and in the upside down. So I can, <laughs> I can give him a pass there. But uh yeah. That was an interesting <laughs> interview. Um, great talk. I do have to run. I got something here at yeah, uh, seven fifteen. Well, thanks but, uh, for being here. Yeah, great, yeah, great talking. It's great meeting you. Rather, rather. Oops. go subscribe to Rather on uh, on YouTube. So he takes some time to do his videos, but they're good videos. Okay, they're quality. So subscribe so you know you know when he posts, and he'll hopefully be here next week. Um, but yeah, wow, we're we're over time. Were there any, um, I have some other clips here, but I'll just kind of uh, reference them or go, go for it, Chris. Yeah. Well, I was going to say Stephen Greer speaks like a politician sometimes where like he gets asked a question and then somehow when he's done talking, it's like he answered some other question, but it I didn't notice it. Do you know what I mean? 
until later. Yeah. Like, Wait, you didn't actually answer the actual question. So I don't know. But uh -huh. That's just my, yeah, kind of. Voodoo. Yeah, little, 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 little voodoo, <laughs> interview voodoo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, you're, you're, it's kind of like you're in a spell, you know, you, mm -hmm. you, and it doesn't hit you till after. I noticed that's with all of these people. One of the reasons I did the thing where I, I, it wasn't, this was before there was controversy, okay? But I had decided after that initial speech that Lou Elizondo gave to UFO Congress, really when he was kind of really in making his first wave, I just realized, oh, this is going to be an important thought leader, important voice. And I listened to zero things he said after that point until I joined UCR and kind of had, had to get back in the loop because I knew there was some power there, not, not saying it was being used poorly, by any means, but I try to, as a researcher, really focus on just the cases, just the videos. That's why I don't, people ask me what books I read. I don't like to really read like too many opinions because you just, you, then you have too many ideas in your head and you can't look at things accurately. Um, and I gotta be kind of, I have to be willing to be boring <laughs> with my explanations and I'll just, I'll get, I'll get too carried away. Um, <laughs> But there, there were some, it was a great interview. Like I said, go subscribe to Theories of Everything. Uh, but there was a, a, a big theme was, uh, let's see, actually, that is, let, that's probably a, word, a clip worth sharing if I can. Here say, hey, yeah, here you go. Protection. This is a big I'm, theme you know, in the interview. I'm a civilian, never been in the government. I'm a medical trauma doctor, emergency doctor. I said, no, no. But when this happened, I said, make it so. So there's a group that protects us um, that have significant countermeasures in, in their capabilities that keep it at a sort of a. He, he says, keep it at sort of a Mexican standoff, as they'd say. So he's saying it, it's just this. <laughs> um, it's just what a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, that's why I'm still here. Essentially, you know, I've, I'm on a kill list, but I've got this protective group around me. And, and, and then if you have information about UFOs, you know, bring it to us, right? And we have the protective layer. And, and I think people should also keep in mind that, you know, what your brain does when you are fearful, right? And while a lot of these speeches that a lot of these people give seem inspiring and rallying, you'll notice there's a lot of fear in it. Um, I mean, he's lucky to be alive. So why are you going to, why does that necessarily instill confidence to like go forward with disclosure? So I think there's some double speak in, in a lot of these, speeches and interviews and people need to think hey what is this doing to me psychologically um as far as like can we handle the truth i think we can handle any truth but can we handle our deep like dark fears like about ourselves and um what you know advanced aliens could do or would do or are we fear fearful you know and and how does that affect our digestion of a lot of these interviews is it like a celebrity stockholm syndrome where you're like oh crap this is scary i better be a fan of this person because this is actually scary that stuff he was saying there i don't know to me like the most public public figures that you know the u.s government wants would be like julian assange and edward snowden right those guys they cross the U.S. government, <laughs> and we want them. And where are they? Like, well, Julian Assange is going through some crap now, but Edward Snowden, he's in Russia. He literally has to live in Russia for, right. for his protection. So now, but Stephen Greer, he, ha he, he says he has this secret group that's protecting him, and there's some sort of Mexican standoff thing. I don't know. I find that hard to believe. That's just my well personal opinion. But Chris, I mean, yeah. do you not recall as we're filming these these documentaries uh, like early on? Um, yeah, just had this odd experience where my son and I are out shooting basketball in the driveway. A car pulls up, attractive European couple, mid-30s. They, they signal babies in the back. Um, 
They need to get to this friend's house. The GPS in the car is a rental and it isn't turned on. Can I help them get there? And so I end up like being just like, oh, well, here, I'll just, yeah, you know what? Let me close the garage door. Yep. And we'll head. You can follow us and I'll show you where it's at. It's only like five minutes away. And yeah, I mean, it easily got me out of the house with the back door unlocked. You know what I mean? Like, I remember I'm like, Chris, bro, I don't, I don't know if like, I might've just got bugged or something, man. Like, I'm not sure if these were CIA assets or, or somebody. Um, yeah, it was, it was super odd. Uh, so, but would I have even had that thought, I guess, to UFO Jane's uh, point, if people like Stephen Greer and movies and all these different things weren't putting that idea into my head that, oh, hey, if you're doing something right that the government hey. might not agree with, then they're probably going to keep tabs on you. It's like, I mean, well, bro, I think they're doing a heck of a job just with my phone and browser history and everything else. Do they really need to come out here? <laughs> I don't think so. I think they're getting my audio and everything anyways. Why do they got to go put some yeah. old fashioned bug in a lamp? I don't mm -hmm. know. I mean, I totally agree with, and that's why I feel so conflicted because I agree with Stephen Greer's approach, which, which he's advocating, which is just, you got to put it. Oh, I keep this is the second mm -hmm. time I've, I've uh, flung my headphones out of my ears <laughs> with due to my hand gestures, but yeah, he's saying get it out there because then it's it can't be uh, kept secret. It can't be and all that. But then, you know, he throws in those really divisive, polarizing, just like wild claims that um, it, along with it. And then, yeah, kind of fear mongers. If, if you really I mean, it, it's a pretty scary picture that he's painting. So. I think in the back of your mind, even if you're like, oh, yeah, disclosure, I think your reptilian part of your brain, that genius, you know, subconscious is still paying attention. And it's probably, you know, informing your actions more than you think. So I think that if we can handle the truth about ourselves and kind of dig in to all of this. I think, you know, we can handle disclosure, but these are kinds of tests, I think. Um, <laughs> It feels like a bit of manipulation, I guess, is yeah. what he does there with that, with the fear mongering and stuff, because it paints him as empathetic in certain ways because he's like a hero like figure then for doing this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just tries to kind of manipulate your point of view of him, I think. But a lot, I mean, but a lot of good stuff, like the cash I know. And trip <laughs> stuff, you know, I think it's uh, so she just kind of keep bouncing back like a ping pong ball yep. with, with people like this. Because who else is giving this information? I can say that I don't think Cash Landrum was aliens and we need to get to the bottom of that. And that's part of disclosure, too. But who's going to listen to me, right? I'm not a former counterintelligence agent. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm not I'm not a wasn't a doctor, right? I have people know I do marketing by day. It's just, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not as, um, but you know, I'm grateful for that. I'm, I'm actually, I mean, guys, I super pre appreciate your super chat. We want more super chat, um, support Amy want to do this as much as possible, but, but it's also pretty neat to not have to do this. You guys know I'm here cause I want to be here. And I mean, it would, I wouldn't want to be lying or, um, I, that wouldn't be fun. Like, what would be the point? I wouldn't like, uh, you'd have to pay me to do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So man, but wow. More than two hours. Thank you guys, Chris and Tyler. You guys were super fun to help break down everything. We didn't even touch on everything. There was Tyler Henry's, uh, he's a, um, a medium and he's been tweeting a lot about UFOs lately. So maybe we'll, we'll, or aliens even and so maybe we'll talk about that more amy next week um but yeah let's uh let's kind of do a little outro for everybody so tyler and chris why don't you remind folks whoever you know wants to talk first for sure it. so 
Yeah. Tyler and Chris with Dockside Media, our new documentary, In Plain Sight, The Intelligence Community and UFOs, is available October 18th on Amazon, Apple TV, iTunes, Google Play, PlayStation, and Microsoft. We've also got three other documentaries out, Conscious Contact, Full Disclosure, on those same platforms, The Ghosts of Gettysburg and Secrets of the Sasquatch. And like this one, we we bring new information. We go out in the field. We're doing this haunted camp out coming up. And so if you want to like join us on these adventures and appear in these docs, Fun. like we just put out, you know, public calls on social media and we get these people to show up um, and have a great time and have these really awesome, genuine experiences. So you can find us on Facebook, uh, Dockside Media, D-O-C, side media and then we're on instagram twitter tiktok at dockside media and also on youtube awesome yeah so and please if you like the work please leave a review sorry chris didn't mean to cut you off but please leave a review do Do we read every single one of them even if it's not your cup of tea like i understand that man the world's a big place so i'd still like to hear your point of view and maybe there's something in there where we can use that feedback and try and make our next documentary even better and so far um out of the, the, the three documentaries like over 250 amazon reviews over 40 percent five stars which Ooh, is like awesome. mind blowing. I'm like, dude, I can't yeah. remember the last time I gave a five star review. So we're like, especially in this humbled. community, especially in exactly this community. <laughs> for real. <laughs> no, no. So we're yeah. really humbled that like people are really, really enjoying these. That's super cool. Uh, so Chris, go ahead. What was your very, very cool? Your stick. You want to finish point. about what? Didn't you just finish <laughs> uh, filming some sci fi horror feature that you wrote and directed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That, that doesn't fun. matter at this point. Yeah, no, I just finished my my feature film. It's called Transient. It'll be out sometime next okay. year. But well, cool. We'll find that. Maybe yeah. we can talk about it on Weird Hollywood or something. I'm down. Well, very, very Always cool. down. Yeah, thank you guys for having us so much. This was a lot of fun. We love yeah, Amy. Thank you thanks for, for thanks for making this connect. Like this was really really dope. I'm so glad I got to meet Jane. Yeah, this and is rather. awesome. It's so much fun to meet new folks in the community and um, expand the conversations and who we talk to so cool so bye bye tyler bye chris bye Bye, guys it's been magical we love you (laughs) well thank you amy i know we've been going over lately so um you know you can always hop (laughs) hop off yeah i know but but it's my fun night so i'm so glad that you're still here um is this is this who you were speaking of earlier who had the no, uh, uh, no uh, but no. that looks like a great channel that also looks like a fellow star scene and has a um, Stephen Greer. Just uh, I thought maybe it was related because they have like a Stephen Greer connection, which is to kick it with Whoa. Greer when we, he did CE5. I grew up in North Carolina, I wasn't allowed to go because I was a kid, and Stephen didn't allow kids. Huh. Huh. Well, you found your salt seed self. I wish you were in the uh, and I wonder if you were if she was in the interview earlier. That would have been a good that would have been a good question. Why didn't you allow kids? But I mean, that yeah. probably makes sense. He's probably yeah. I mean, we were just talking about him talking about very fearful things. So, you know, maybe it was yeah, a little bit. But yeah, this is this is really fun. Um, sorry for no glurp the alien appearance today. Hopefully he will be back next week. We've been um, pretty busy lately. So um, we'll have more show and tell and then maybe a guest next week. Maybe not. Who knows, right? But we'll have it's magic, we'll, guys. It's we magic, all of it. To talk about. And maybe I will start off muted or or maybe I will be muted the entire time. Okay. So you just never know. <laughs> all right, Amy. Well, I will let you go. Bye guys. Um, all right, bye, Amy. Thank you guys. Let's see if um I'm gonna try to play the outro music. It never works, but um let's just see. Let's see if it can work this time. I'm just curious. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you guys for being here. Remember <clears throat> uh ufo con november i don't want to say the wrong thing i want to say november 13th in jefferson texas so that's like northeast texas i will be speaking there and um so i would love to see you and meet you Uh, so if you live in texas or you i mean texas is is cool it's a really big state it's a fun state to road trip through so um yes as we uh 
as we end the stream today, let's remember <laughs> how much uh, we appreciate Justice Bieber's um, help with disclosure. We very much invite Justice Bieber uh, to help us bring the truth out. Thank you guys for being here. We will see you next week. Um, same time, same place. Bye.